Hey everyone, JT from eBike Escape. And in today's video, we're gonna check out the Flyer L885 cargo electric bike. So let's get into it. I'll have to change this out, of course. This obviously isn't the electric bike, but I thought that this was a good introduction. Radio Flyer is the same brand that makes the Flyer electric bike. They just decided to transition from this type of micro mobility into that kind of micro mobility. I'm super excited for this review, but before we get into that and I share anything else with you, let me go ahead and return this wagon back to my kids before they realize it's gone. Whew, there we go. That looks a lot more like it. Before we get a closer look at the Flyer L885, I just wanna ask everyone two quick favors. One, if you are looking to purchase any Flyer electric bike, please consider using the links down in the description. All purchases made through those links help directly support eBike Escape and continue to make content like this one. And favor number two, if you could please consider subscribing to our channel, it's a free way for you to show that you support what we do here at eBike Escape and cost you nothing. Before we jump into this too, I also wanna ask if in the comments, if there are any other electric bikes that you feel we should review, please leave those comments down below. The main reason that I'm asking that is with the Flyer L885, it was actually one of the most requested electric bikes we had seen in our cargo electric bike comments section. So those comments really help us show what type of electric bikes you guys would like to see. And I really have to thank all the commenters that recommended this bike. I absolutely love cargo electric bikes, kind of like Ryan, they're really growing on me, as well as the fact that this has now become mine and my kids' favorite way to get around town. So let's take a closer look. Here's a much better overview look of the Flyer L885. Flyer offers this electric bike. They also offer the M880, which has room in the rear for one passenger versus the two on this bike. And then they also recently announced and started offering a folding electric cargo bike, which has a built-in rear rack and some other cool features that are nice to see on a cargo capable bike. Again, it's really cool to see what Flyer is doing with their electric bikes and kind of sticking to that cargo belief and ability to carry things plays nod to the Radio Flyer wagon name. The Flyer L885 is actually offered in four colors and the paint schemes on these bikes are really cool. They all have a little bit of color up here on the front and then kind of fade down to this darker gray slash black on the rear part of the frame. And then also have these nice dark wood accents on the rear. Again, this rear basket area is not included with the actual purchase of the L85, but it is a purchasable accessory on top of the bike. We'll go into that a little bit more in depth and we'll kind of show you what the rear section looks like if you don't get the cargo package. And along with various paint schemes, there is also various frame sizes. We'll put the various frame sizes on the screen now, small, medium, and large, but what the height recommendations are for those particular frame sizes. It's always nice to see a bike that is available in multiple frame sizes as it makes fitting the bike to the rider that much easier. Let's go ahead and start up here in the front, get a closer look at this bike. This is actually a very interesting wheel and tire choice that Flyer decided to make. Up here in the front, you have a 26 by three inch front tire and wheel. And then in the rear, you have a 20 by three inch tire and wheel. And the reason I think that they did that was to bring down the rear of the bike to give you a lower center of gravity. So that if you have a little bit extra weight in the back, it's a little bit easier for you to control. Some other brands have tried to combat this problem by going with a smaller size wheel and tire setup front and rear, 20 inch, 22 inch, or even a 24. I can tell you after riding this electric bike for quite a few miles, this staggered or mullet setup really helps provide a lot of stability and really provides a lot of confidence from a rider, especially when you have an extra 100, 120 pounds in the rear of the bike. Zooming in, we have Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes. Of course, it's always nice to see a name brand caliper and brake setup. 
It would have been really nice to see hydraulic disc brakes, but the name brand brakes stop us just fine and I've had no problems while riding my kids to and from school. And then that's paired to a Tektro 180 millimeter front rotor. And if you look here, we have a quick release front wheel in case you ever needed to take off the front wheel to say, fit this cargo electric bike in the back of your minivan like I have had to do as it's a little bit long to fit onto my bike rack. And then moving up, we have a rigid front fork, so no suspension, but these larger, beefier sidewall tires really do provide a little bit of cushion. And then up here, we have a plastic fender. It is a black plastic fender, really accents the color scheme on this bike nicely. And then also included is this front headlight. Like we say with all lights, it's not the brightest light we've ever seen, but the built-in reflector and ability to output light really do help you see a little bit at night. But if you wanna be seen maybe during the day, we always recommend a handlebar mounted light. As you can see, I'm riding around with a kryptonite handlebar mounted light that has a flashing option. Helps me be seen, especially when I've got some precious cargo being carried around in the back. And then moving up a little bit, you can kind of get a glimpse of the cable wrapping here. Really nice cable wrapping. They put a lot of time into this and you can see it's a smaller detail, but it's wrapped all the way up into the brakes. And then coming back in here, you can see we have this flyer branded plate, which covers up the four welded on bosses in the front for you can mount a basket. We'll talk more about the accessories and the styling of those baskets when we get to the rear passenger package. But one thing I do wanna note while we're up here, we didn't get a front basket. However, we have a plethora of other accessory options and the four bosses on the front here are the same as the Rad Mission. So we were able to mount a Rad Mission basket on the front here to say carry a backpack or a couple extra water bottles. And then here is a much better look at that cable wrapping. Like I said, it's literally wrapped from end all the way down into the down tube down here where it goes into this nice grommet. Oh, and how could I forget while we're down here, the deflopulator. Always nice to see a deflopulator. I know some people out there have said that these aren't really necessary and they're not really meant for stability at speed or anything like that. What I think they're meant for is when you have this center stand that picks up the bike, when you have somebody climb into the rear of the bike, what it does is it brings the rear of the bike down to the ground and it allows the front wheel to get light so that it could turn. But what the deflopulator does is it keeps that front wheel nice and straight. So that if you hop on the bike or you push it off the center stand, you don't have to worry about it following the tire and falling right over, especially when you have your kids or somebody like that loading into the back. And then coming up to the cockpit, you can see we have Tektro branded mechanical brake levers with motor cutoffs, as well as the integrated bell. And then here we have some larger than average ergonomic palm rests. They are not locking and they are just basic black. So if you're looking for something that maybe fits your palm a little bit better, we have our accessories list tagged in the description. Moving over, we have the display. While this is a very basic display, it's easy to function and has everything you need right in front of you. On the right hand side here, you can see we have the battery level. And then at the top there, you can see it says B1. So this bike does have the option for dual battery. That is an accessory that they sell on their website. Comes in at about $500, but man, for being able to add that extra battery and range, it'd be really nice to have. Then we have the pedal assist levels that you cycle with the plus and minus button down here at the bottom, one to five. And then also on the screen, we have a mile per hour reader. And then you have the odometer, which if you press the power button cycles through, trip, voltage that's in, currently in the battery, and then back to odometer. Again, like I said, it's a very basic display. And even within the advanced settings that you get into by pushing the plus and minus, it's a pretty locked down display. P01 is screen brightness, you can just go one to three. And then P02 is miles or kilometers. And then SE2 is one that we were actually not 100% certain what that is, but it doesn't allow you to change it anyway. And then you're back to P01. So it's a very basic advanced section of the display. Moving across the cockpit here, we have this adjustable stem. Really happy to see an adjustable stem, really allows a little bit more fit along with the frame size to the end rider. And then coming back up and across, see the kryptonite light, which again, not included. And then we have the trusty Sys Index seven speed thumb shifter. We see this component on so many bikes. It's tried, it's true, it works without issues. In the 200 miles that we've been riding this bike, I have not had a single issue out of it. And then coming across, we have a twist grip throttle. Some people prefer thumb throttles. We like the twist grip throttle, it works just fine. And then we have the large palm rest ergonomic grip that matches the other side. Coming down from the cockpit, here's a closer look at this integrated front battery. On the side over here, you can see the charge port. This battery can be charged on or off the bike. And then coming around to the other side over here, we have the lock. 
So let's go ahead and pull the battery out and give you guys a closer look at that. All right, like I showed you on the side here, there's a little key spot. You simply put the keys in and twist them towards the front of the bike, battery pops up and out, and you simply lift the battery out. There's a little retention pin on the side here that allows you for when you put the battery back in, you put it on that and let it slam in. So this is a, I believe this is a re-engine pack. On the top here, it has a four light battery indicator. Again, we already showed you the charge port, can be charged on or off the bike. And on the side here, it shows it is a 46.8 volt, 14.7 amp hour batteries, which equates to 687 watt hours. So we would have liked to see a little bit of a bigger battery, especially when you've got cargo that you're carrying. But Flyer did think of that by giving you the option to add a secondary battery. One quick other note before we move on to we'll show you where the second battery goes. On the bottom of the battery here, when this comes shipped to you, there's a piece of plastic that kind of covers this bottom area. I thought it was a piece of shipping protection, so I pulled it out. But since I have removed that, there's a little bit of a creak that kind of comes from this little crevice area or right here on the side of the battery where the battery just wiggles a little bit in the frame and it causes some noises while riding. So if you're looking for a nice peaceful ride, either leave that piece of plastic in there or even if you take it off, just maybe apply a little bit of grease or something down there to kind of stop the metal from rubbing together. And here is a close look at where that secondary battery goes. As you can see, it's almost as if they designed this bike around that secondary battery. And really that thought process of just having everything kind of thought out really flows through this bike. And down here at the bottom, you can see the little plug that is capped off where the battery would go in. Again, like I said, that secondary battery comes in at about $499. And you can find that on the accessory page on Radio Flyer's website, or when you go onto their website to purchase this bike, you can use their bike builder and kind of play around in there and add some of the rear basket options, second battery, and things like that. Coming up here real quick, we have the pedals. So these are plastic Welgo pedals. Again, a very common component that we see on a lot of bikes. If you're looking to maybe add a little bit of color or have a little bit more grip, we have a lot of recommendations on our e-bike accessories list. Coming down here to the bottom of the bike, we have this two-sided kickstand that picks up the rear wheel. Again, this is a very common cargo style kickstand that we see on a lot of bikes. Haven't had any problems with it falling off of this and having my kids get in and out of it, not been a problem. One thing to note though, is that getting the bike off of this when there is cargo loaded into the back can be a bit of a hassle. And moving back here to the rear of the bike, these lower foot sections are included in the purchase. I will put a close up picture now of what is included and what this area looks like without all of the accessories mounted, but this can transform from a VIP section up to a basket. I'm gonna transform that right now and I'll show you what that looks like. Simply throw the buckles around here, buckle all three of them and zip up your sides. And you just went from a VIP section for your kids to a cargo carrying basket. That quick. And if you don't purchase this nice cargo rear basket from the start, the bike doesn't come with just two open windows. What it actually comes with is these two wooden boards on top of those cages, closes in this rear area and makes the rear of the bike look complete even if you don't have a basket option. And then again, coming around the bike, showing you kind of the stuff back here in the rear motor section is gonna be a little difficult, but here's a close look at the rear fender area, you can see that this bike comes shipped from the factory with this wheel cover. So you don't have to worry about anybody's little legs or anything like that getting into any of the motor components, which is always nice to see. And then here is a close look at the very tucked in Tektro Aries rear mechanical disc brake and 180 millimeter rotor. From this side, I'll kind of give you guys a glimpse of the motor. This is a 500 watt motor. While it's not the most powerful electric bike out there, it's really, perfectly capable of getting you up hills and stuff like that. Of course, would have loved to see something a little bit more powerful on this bike, but alas, when you have kids in the back and you're just using this to kind of get to and from town, you really don't need all that speed and acceleration. You just want to make sure that you get to wherever you're going safely. This bike is really optimized with that in mind. Up here on the rear fender to add to that safety, you can see there is a brake light. This is a brake actuated rear brake light. I'm gonna go ahead and walk up to the front and push that for you. So you can see it does actuate with the brake lights. And then if you turn the headlights on, it does have a daytime running mode. Obviously we're filming this in the daylight, so it's gonna be a little hard to see. And then it gets brighter every time you pull the brakes. And then moving over from the brake light, come around to the drivetrain side. Again, this is gonna be a very difficult to see here. You can see tucked down there, we have a Shimano tourney rear derailleur and derailleur guard. Again, this is a very basic entry level derailleur that we see on a lot of electric bikes. It gets the job done and will get you through all the gears with a little problem. And then here on the back, you can see that there is a 
barrel adjuster. So if something does get out of sync, you have a little bit of adjustment there. And then moving up from the derailleur, here is a closer look at the standard 14 to 28 rear freewheel. And now if I have any gripes about the Flyer electric bike, it is going to be based around the gearing. And the reason is not the standard 14 to 28 tooth rear. It is actually up here in the front, follow this long chain past this really nice guide wheel they keep they have here, but it's in the front here. So this is a 44 tooth double-sided metal front chain ring. And what that 44 tooth gearing does, and you'll see it in some of our riding footage, is that you really top out being able to add any human power at about 15 to 16 miles an hour. Now, I think that is by design, as Flyer figured that this bike is great for inner city riding and doesn't need to go much faster than that. But we live out here in the country, so in order for us to get to town to be able to ride this bike around, we do have to pedal on some country roads where the speeds are a little bit higher. It'd be really nice to be able to add a little bit of human power up to about 20 miles an hour. Now, the rear motor and battery setup are completely powerful enough to power the bike up to 20 miles an hour, but from about 15 to 20 miles an hour, you're not able to supply any of your own power, so you're relying strictly on battery power. Out of everything that is on this bike, the gearing is my only real issue. I think that I'm gonna be actually upgrading that here in the near future. So if you'd like to see that as well, where we change out maybe the front chain ring or maybe even change out the rear freewheel, let us know in the comment section below and we'll make sure to get a video out about that. And then moving up from the gearing, you see we have the matching plastic Welgo pedal. And then coming up here, we have a Cellar Royale seat. This is a pretty nice padded seat. Again, seats are kind of one of those things that's up to rider preference. I'd prefer maybe something with a little bit less cushion personally, and maybe even a suspension seat post. So I will probably do an upgrade of that here in the near future as well. Although with having the kids in the back, I feel a little wrong having my own nice cush suspension seat while they're maybe on something a little bit thinner as well. However, I have not had any complaints about anybody riding in the back. All right, and that pretty much wraps up the walk around of the Flyer L885. Again, fantastic bike. Really like seeing some of the name brand components on this bike. But let's go ahead and throw it to some riding footage where maybe you'll be able to see what I'm talking about about the gearing. Ryan is actually going to be doing the riding footage for this video in, in an effort to keep it as consistent on the hill climb and pedaling as possible so you can get an idea for the power as he's ridden some of the other cargo electric bikes. So with that said, let's get over to it. All right, first person riding footage on the Flyer L885 cargo electric bike. Full disclosure, this is actually my first time riding this bike since JT has taken over this review, but I wanted to do the first person riding footage just to keep things consistent, more so on the hill climb, but I'll also do the throttle only test. I have the speedometer app by Cool Nix here, GPS speed to compare to the speed on the display. First test, again, throttle only. This is a class two electric bike, so should top out at 20 miles per hour with pedaling or the right hand twist throttle. And just a note, in pedal assist level zero, you don't get any access to the throttle, just something to be aware of as it differs depending on the electric bike. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, throttle only. Two, seven, 11, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 20 miles an hour. Display is reading 19.6.7, and the GPS is saying 20 or 21 miles an hour. As I mentioned, a class two electric bike. Now we do get the question, can you ride an electric bike with no battery? Obviously that wouldn't be an ideal situation. Hopefully you don't run out of battery or don't have issues, but technically, yes, you can. It's just going to be quite a bit of work. You can see I shifted down to fourth gear here, going about 10 miles an hour here on flat ground. So not terrible, but hills are going to be a very significant uh, challenge. So best to prevent that from happening. All right, let's go in the different pedal assist levels. I actually shifted all the way down here into first gear and I can already tell I'm, I'm likely going to have to shift up, but let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level one. And yes, I'm going to shift up here, going about nine miles an hour, maybe even third gear. I will say pedal assist level one feels like the motor is just barely kicking on. Uh, again, third gear, which is still fairly low and going about 
nine, 10 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. There we go. Now I can hear the motor at least. Could probably go into fourth gear here, going about 11 miles an hour. Maybe even fifth gear if I wanted a little bit of a slower cadence. I like to ride our electric bikes, get a bit of a workout, but usually pedal where I could pedal for a long period of time. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. Feel lot, quite a bit more power there, I would say. Going about 15 miles an hour. I did shift up into six gear. All right, let's go into pedal assist level four. And again, maybe you can even hear it. I'll go into seventh gear here. And the legs are starting to spin. So for sure going to be at a faster cadence as you approach the 20 mile per hour mark. Going about 18 miles an hour or so here. And we'll hang it right. All right, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five. And there we go at 20 miles an hour. And again, I think I would prefer the gearing to be slightly different. Maybe a bigger front chain ring because I have to work a little bit, spin my legs pretty fast to try to provide my own power. So something to be aware of on this bike. And of course, it is topping out at that 20 miles an hour, being a class two electric bike. So that's how it performs on flat ground. Let's see how this bike does up our large hill climb test. Okay, time for the hill climb test. This is the hill that we test out all the electric bikes that we review so you can compare and contrast. The hill looks so much smaller on the Insta360. So we'll throw up a picture of the hill and also throw up the specs as well. First test will be throttle only. I'm actually very curious what this bike can do. We'll get up to speed before the hill really starts. Just a note, I am a lighter rider at around 145 or so pounds. All right, hill is really starting now. 18, 17, 16, 15. 14, 13, 12, 11. So it doesn't look like it's going to be the fastest cargo electric bike up this hill, but it's going to make it nonetheless. And just ride feel, I have actually feels pretty good. I like the, the wider tires are nice and stable and I've been enjoying doing a short ride on the bike. Really like the step through frame as well. All right, it looks like 11 miles per hour is going to be the minimum speed as we approach the top of the hill. But of course, this is an electric bike after all. So you're likely to do some pedaling, get a little bit of exercise. So I'm going to go back down the hill and I'll test out the bike while pedaling. Okay, hill climb test while pedaling. Just a note, I like to comment on the braking power. I did hit 28 miles per hour coming down the hill. And while these are mechanical disc brakes, the Tektro Aries brakes do perform really well. Of course, hydraulics are definitely better, but these were able to get me and the bike to a stop, no problem. And of course, it's always nice to have a name brand as far as brakes go. So I'm going to shift all the way down here and go into pedal assist level one. Now, not surprisingly, based off of the earlier footage, I am definitely going to have to go into a higher pedal assist level. The hill really hasn't even started, at least the steep part. And uh, I'm doing a fair bit of work. I'm able to keep going, but 
I can just barely feel the motor in pedal assist level one. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. Slightly better there. I could maybe shift up to second gear here, going about nine miles an hour. So you could conserve battery if you'd like, which is always nice. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. A little bit more power there. Probably would still stay in second gear. Again, putting some effort in, but not overly exerting myself. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level four. I could shift up here, I think, to third gear, getting close to that 11 miles an hour. There it is. Maybe even fourth gear. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five. And I could shift up to maybe fifth gear here, even sixth gear. And we're going up faster than it did as far as the minimum speed goes on throttle only. So pedaling certainly has helped. And of course, your range is going to be extended quite a bit. And I'm going about 14 miles an hour now. All right, with that, JT is going to give you his concluding thoughts on the Flyer L885 cargo electric bike. It's no secret that we here at eBike Escape love cargo electric bikes. Whether it's for their simple ability to carry cargo or to make some fun with your family out of what could be a mundane task. So when a plethora of viewers started leaving comments on our cargo electric bike videos that Radio Flyer was coming out with a cargo electric bike, we knew we had to give it a try. The Flyer L885 is among the first of two bikes Radio Flyer has released. The other option is the M880, which is more of a mid-tail design. And more recently, they've released the folding cargo electric bike and a cruiser style electric bike. Both sport cargo carrying areas and thoughtful designs. The thoughtful designs and overall quality of the parts is really what helps Flyer stand out to us. Flyer has over a century of experience making things with wheels and they're really using that to their advantage. For their first swing at the cargo electric bike space, the L885 is a fantastic start. From the paint schemes to the overall finish, it really sets them apart from the crowd. The wood paneling in the rear really helps tie the rear end together and really adds to some of the visual appeal that the L885 has. The L885 comes equipped with name brand components from the Tektra mechanical disc brakes to the Shimano drivetrain components and CSC tires. While we would have loved to see hydraulic disc brakes, the Tektra Aries mechanical disc brakes are among the top of mechanical disc brakes that we've tested. The tire sizing is also an interesting choice. From running a 26 inch wheel in the front and a 20 inch wheel in the rear is something that we really haven't seen any other company do. We do believe that this choice was done to help lower the center of gravity. And after having ridden this e-bike, I think it was a great decision. The loaded, the L885 is very manageable and easy to ride. Another thing that we really like about Flyer is their impressive lineup of accessories. The design and thought that goes into some of those accessories is top notch. The kid and cargo carrying area is among the top accessory that we've seen for any e-bike. The accessory lineup doesn't just stop at carrying items. Another thing they've added is a second battery option, and that's just something that you don't tend to see from companies thinking that far ahead on the production of their bikes. Let's talk about some of the things that we did not like about the Flyer L885. The first has to be the gearing. The front chainring that they opted for is a 44-2 chainring. That's not something we tend to see in the cargo space, a 46 to 50 is a lot more common in this segment. While I'm not a fan of this choice, I believe it was actually by design. Imagine you're riding in a more suburban slash city environment, averaging about 10 to 15 miles an hour, then the gearing is perfect. You can pedal right up to that 15 mile per hour limit with no problem. However, for my use case, where I'm trying to ride into town on some country roads in a 15 to 20 mile an hour range, we find ourselves ghost pedaling a little bit more than I would like and relying on motor performance above 15 miles an hour. The lower speeds of an urban environment make this gearing make sense. In my environment where tractors are more common than cars, I'd prefer a bit more pedaling ability. Now I do plan to swap this out in the future. Let us know in the comments if that's a video you'd like to see. Larger chain rings can be had from anywhere of 20 to 35 bucks on websites like Amazon. The only other thing we would have liked to see is probably a slightly higher wattage motor. While the 500 watt nominal brushless motor that Flyer includes never left a strand on any of the Wisconsin hills that we have here, it was a bit slower when fully loaded getting up some of those hills than some other cargo electric bikes that we've tested. Really, those were only minor gripes and are overshadowed by the good. The overall quality of the L885, the UL certification of the battery, and a name like Radio Flyer to stand behind their product for years to come, 
Oh, and did I mention a 30 day trial period? Yeah, a trial period, something we've never seen. Very few, if any, companies that offer that. Be sure to read the fine print though, as there are some things you may wanna consider if that is what you're looking into, but knowing that a company is willing to stand behind their product that much really should give you a lot of confidence. The L885 has quickly become one of our favorite cargo electric bikes and is definitely deserving of a spot on our best cargo electric bikes list. This bike will almost certainly be staying in our fleet and will be returning to bus driver duties as soon as the weather warms up back here in Wisconsin. Thanks again to Flyer for sending out this e-bike for us to review. And thank you viewers for watching this video. If you are looking to purchase any Flyer electric bike, please consider using the links down in the description. All purchases made through those links help directly support e-bike escape. It helps continue to make content like this one. Thanks guys, we'll see you all in the next one.